Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to talk about the new Concierge or Chairman's Club rewards that just came out. Now, if you haven't seen this yet, there's some additional perks that were released for those in the Chairman's Club. Read that as whales. And they came um, in ranging from things like interesting to what I would call pretty damn questionable. So we're going to run through these real quick, and then I'm going to talk about the top tier rewards. So starting off at the High Admiral level, otherwise kind of known as the entry level concierge, we have rewards that include a top hat and monocle, which we've already seen in Hangar, and frankly they're kind of hilarious, um, as well as a limited edition 40 year aged in-game whiskey that is going to probably just be mostly Hangar Flare. In the more useful category, this tier also is providing an Arclight laser pistol in the Executive Edition, which means it has a gold skin to it. It's actually pretty sharp looking, it's in-game now, but it's highly reflective in-game, so maybe not a super practical thing to take on operations, um, but it's good if you're just going to pull it in defense. Um, the next tier up is the Grand Admiral, and in addition to those previous items, it also includes a gold Executive Edition Arrowhead Sniper Rifle. Now, to my knowledge, these are LTI items as well, but a golden reflective sniper rifle, if it ends up being as reflective as the pistol is, it's probably not the best actual option, considering a scope glint can be problematic in games. Having an entire gun that's reflective may end up giving your position away, though it is pretty boss looking. Uh, the third tier is Space Marshal, and along with other items, you get an RSI Venture Explorer suit, which if you're following the trend, appears to be gold-plated as well, being the Executive Edition. And then we get into what I consider the questionable area, with Wing Commanders getting all of the below, um, plus a uh, F-8C Lightning, uh, which looks to be the civilian version of the ship, and Legatus Navium, uh, which I believe is red... I read somewhere is something like Diplomat of the Navy, but I think it's also the old High Command. Either way, they're receiving a gold-trimmed version of the F-8 Lightning. So those last two tiers are where we get into odd territory. You know, first off, I guess I should say I have no issues with freebies given out to those who spend a lot to support the development of the game, or those who are getting a lot of referrals. Now, granted, I'm one of those who get a lot of referrals, but I think it makes sense to support those that are supporting the game with stuff that doesn't actually cost anything against the project. Where I have some issue with the choice of ship in that being an F-8 Lightning. Um, it could have been an Idris for all I care. You know, something that I think is going to cost a lot more in-game than the Lightning. But when we hear over and over again that the F-8 is not going to be up for sale, we all get the impression that this ship is not going to be provided to players outside of maybe the campaign. Now, technically, this isn't CIG selling the F-8, right? Because now it's a perk. Um, but it sends an odd message. It's almost like saying, you can't buy this ship, but if you buy enough other things, we'll give you the ship that you really wanted anyways. Now, I'm not expecting anybody to drop 10 grand extra just to get their hands on an F-8 Lightning. But still, it's just, it's just weird, you know? I would also venture that a large number of people at this level are actually resellers um, who are doing buying and selling on the gray market. And while they're technically adding money into the verse by buying ships, they're also selling in a different location, meaning that they're acting as a middleman to CIG, collecting the perks while the end user could have just started on the CIG site. Again, I don't really have an issue with the gray market, but it just kind of feels odd if people are getting benefited in that way. Now, I think this at least sends the message that the Lightning is not going to be as exclusive as we originally thought. I'd say at this point, it's likely that it goes up for sale at some point, probably at a high price point to try and limit the number that gets sold into the verse. I also wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being a reward for either finishing the campaigns or potentially inverse, maybe if you build up your rep with the UEE high enough, maybe you're offered the option of buying one with credits, almost like an Elite Dangerous where you build up your rep with the Imperial so you can earn the right to buy the Imperial Clipper. I just really kind of dislike when the team sets themselves up for bad press, and I feel like this is one of the types of things that's going to do just that. I can almost envision the headlines now about Star Citizen's new $10,000 ship. You know, at this point, it almost feels like they have to do something to open the ship up to others, you know, through a sale or through earning it to avoid the image of people buying this at huge dollar amounts. So it's almost forcing their hand into backing out of their commitment that they weren't going to sell this, or they're going to do something else to technically get around that. It feels like CIG just sort of pulled out that golden pistol and kind of shot themselves in the foot here, again. The good news, though, is that the website is great, the new version, it looks really good, and the 3.0 is beautiful and getting a lot of good press, so maybe this slides through, but... It just feels like another marketing misstep in my mind. So that's it. I kind of wanted to just cover this and give you guys some thoughts. Um, if you guys have questions, let me know. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more coming soon. And have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.